Kiera McKenna, Roberto Di Zabi. No, Chelsea are not actually going to pick from these two managers. Di Zabi, who I tipped will be the next manager, is looking unlikely. But Chelsea are going to go for Enzo. Yes, they're going to go for Enzo. But can Enzo play and coach? No, so they're not going for Enzo Fernandez. They're going to go for Enzo Maresca. So Enzo Maresca is actually the leading candidate to be the next Chelsea manager. Actually, it looks like the final uh, details of the deal have actually been concluded. And uh, who's Enzo Maresca? So Enzo Maresca comes from the Pep Guardiola philosophy school of football coaches. He's amongst uh, Pep Guardiola's numerous assistants. And um, we are going to today to try and tactically analyze his system and how he wants his team to play. So, Enzo Maresca is a manager who has uh, worked under Pep Guardiola for quite some time. Actually, being uh, a manager for Manchester City's uh, reserve team, that is the under 21s team. And he's a manager who's quite fascinating. And his philosophy of football derives from Pep Guardiola slow possession build up football and i'm going to tactically analyze his tactics in this video we are going to look at what he expects his team to play so marquesa a manager who adopts the philosophy of positional play a philosophy that Guardiola likes to implement in his football teams and before we even try and analyze enzo maresca's tactics our first stop is to try and understand what positional play is and how Maresca is able to take principles of positional play to employ them in his overall footballing tactics. Before we begin this, do not forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos like Teams will not line up in a straight line that is four defenders three midfielders and three attackers this will enable the team to be easily pressed and will not enable the team to progress with the ball so the team has to be arranged in a staggered position one of the key principles of positional play is no more than two players in a vertical space that is two players in a half space two players in a central zone and two players in the wide areas another key philosophy and principle of positional play is no more than three players in a horizontal space they can only be three players and less this is to ensure equitable distribution of players on the pitch this football philosophy does not restrict players to occupy one position on the pitch and most likely they involve constant movement and rotation of playing position for example if a winger tucks in and cuts inside and a fullback overlaps it is on the owners of the central midfielder to push and occupy the position left by the fullback to cover for the fullback advancing alternatively if the center midfielder pushes up to occupy the half space, the winger will be forced to play out wide. And when there are three players, more than three players in the same vertical space, the fullback will push out to give the team extra width. Alternatively, the holding midfielder drops in between the center backs during build up. And this constant rotation amongst players ensures the team is not easily marked. And this is a common feature among teams that employ positional play tactics, such as Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. Now, another aspect of positional play is switching of play. This switching of play tactic involves switching the ball to one winger who is quick, fast, and technically advanced or technically superior to a fullback who is weak and is not quite fast. This may create a 2v1 numerical superiority in the wide areas where a central midfielder might attack. After understanding what positional play is and the importance of positional play of how players are being distributed all over the pitch, we can now look at Enzo Maresca's tactical philosophy. And the first phase of his tactical philosophy is building from the back. Building from the back and him employing the 4-3-3 formation gives him natural triangles all over the pitch. And this 4-3-3 formation is adopted in a very different fashion. So he likes to build from the back by using his goalkeeper as the first attacker. This is to draw in opponents high up the pitch and create spaces forward. 
but the main aim of building from the back is to be able to retain possession. This philosophy of football is pegged on retaining position. And having the center backs, the goalkeeper, and a dropping in uh, midfielder automatically gives them numerical advantage. And having two midfielders high up also gives them numerical advantage high up. And if the two wide players decide to press the two fullbacks, then the central midfielder can receive the ball in this position and look to progress with the ball and try to find these players in between the lines. Now, Teams will try as much as possible to deny this progress through the middle. And I'm going to show you how teams actually do this. Now, if opponents decide to push a midfielder to try and press and cover this midfielder, then the goalkeeper should have the passing ability to pick these players in between the lines who are dropping deep to receive the ball in space. And this is because they will have isolated the opposition number six. And if a center back decides to commit, then there is the problem because now the goalkeeper being used as the first attacker, his passing range will come in handy to play those balls in the vacated areas. And this is why what makes Ederson so deadly for Manchester City. And having a goalkeeper who is able to play those passes is very, very crucial for Marek uh, Enzo's philosophy of football. Now, this philosophy of football is pegged on using an inverted fullback during build-up. Now, having this fullback inverted gives uh, the opponent a lot of problem. If the winger decides to cover the fullback, then the direct ball to the dropping in winger who can run at the fullback might be very dangerous because he likes to use dangerous players in the wide areas. But if the fullback is not covered, then he's able to receive the ball in this formation and have that box-shaped midfield. And this box-shaped midfield allows them to easily progress with the ball forward high up the pitch. Alternatively, if the opposition try to match this midfield by pressing the two players and using their front line to aggressively press the entire back line, then what you're going to notice is that the team is going to shift in a pseudo back four with the goalkeeper acting as an extra center back. And this back four kind of system actually makes them to outnumber the front three. And this coupled with the central midfielder in this position and a fullback who's pushing higher can enable them to create side overloads on either side, allowing them to play the ball through the sides and immediately look to progress to the final third. And these are the benefits of having slow possession builder. Now, a point to note with the uh, Mareska's system is that he wants his wingers to stay high and wide. The reason of having wingers in this position is to have threat down the wide areas. The number nine to also play in the shoulder of the last defender and the two holding midfielders playing in a staggered position in between the lines, not in line with the striker. Having five players in attack and five players in defense to create a suitable balance in the team, something that Manchester City and Arsenal do effectively. This is coupled by having Mark Kukurela, or sorry, a left back inverting in midfield while the other fullback inverting it in the back line. Now having two inverted fullbacks, one inverting to form a back three while the other one inverting in midfield. And you can see this from the clip here. You can see the position that one fullback has actually inverted and is playing as a third center back while the other one has inverted in midfield and is playing as an extra pivot in that midfield position. The main aim is to have players who are able to receive the ball in tight situations and having three center backs automatically outnumbers a team that tries to press them with two forwards. This coupled with the two holding midfielders who are able to receive the ball and if these holding midfielders manage to get pressed by the two other midfielders pushing forward ahead of them then the players in between the lines can receive the ball and this makes his team even more and more dangerous and having these wide center backs in this position able to receive the ball and play this ball automatically gives them this strength looking at this structure you can see that three to five structure it is not a flat structure but rather a movable structure and the two pivots are playing close to Together, even sometimes staggering their lines so they are able to receive the ball and look to play passes especially to the dropping in forwards and players in between the lines. And once these players in between the lines are able to play this position, then the spaces vacated by the center backs can easily be exploited by having a player immediately running through on goal. And this is what makes his system so 
dangerous. These players in between the lines and these positions that are usually occupied in the half space that are usually occupied with the likes of De Bruyne and Phil Foden are very, very dangerous, especially when you have wide players. Because if you wide, have wide players who are dribblers, they are able to take on their fullback and immediately look to try and score a goal. And to try and prevent having wingers who are more dominant against uh, fullbacks in 1v1 situations, what you're going to find is that if the fullback commits in this phase, then this midfielder is able to make that half space run and receive the ball. Runs that we have seen De Bruyne making time and time in the game. And this enables them now to have those cutback situations where they're able to cut back and look to play those diagonal passes. You can see here those runs being made in that half space position where cutbacks are able to be made and have his team actually score goals. This is his overall philosophy in attack. Now we're going to try and look in key dynamics about this tactical philosophy. And this is when the two holding midfielders decide to sit on these two players in the half space region and the front line decide to play narrow and try to cover these two players. Now this is how this is destroyed. And this is by using the wide center backs to actually play the ball towards the wingers. And because the wingers are very, very good in 1v1 situation, the manager Enzo expects his wingers to use this strength to beat their fullback. And this will further open up this opportunity for them to, able, uh, to be able to play through the opposition on all sides and all angles. Also, the opposition, uh, the, the, the wide center backs can also receive the ball and look to play the balls to midfielders who are dropping from the congested regions who are looking to try to play the balls especially through the channels where the wingers can make those diagonal runs and these are some of the things that makes his system strong also sometimes the striker can drop deep into this position and look to turn with the ball and progress but if a center back decides to follow then a striker who's very good with playing with his ball with the back from goal can easily turn beat the center back and have wingers play making runs in behind who can be played through and actually have a chance to attempt a shot on goal. You can see from this system, a midfielder receives the ball and looks to play the ball to the dropping in striker. So the striker plays back the pass to the midfielder, but this time when he plays this pass, already a winger is making that run, that attacking midfielder is making that run. And now this player is in a 1v1 situation with a goalkeeper where he should have the opportunity to actually score and have a big chance. And that is one of the ways he tried to use his this 3 to 5 system. Sometimes he might decide to stagger his double pivot as you've seen in the in the in the clips and this staggering of the pivots enables the pivots to receive the ball in a much staggered position in a in a situation whereby they are able to now create uncertainty to one player who was marking them create that 2v1 and look to effectively progress the ball towards the higher faces of the pitch and try to actually create opportunities for his team. And these are some of the structures that are very, very important. Having these two holding midfielders in this position also gives them numerical advantage to counter press because they are close together. And once they are able to win this ball in these positions, they are immediately willing to play this ball back to resume and conduct the attack. You can see here, they have already won this ball in this position and they are already looking to try and receive and make that counter-attacking situation to try and create those counter-attacking threats. They win the ball, they gain the ball, but rather than looking to transition, they just look to play those slow possession passes to allow the opponent to go back to their defensive structure where they can restart again to try and build and play through the system. This is also important because Having a fullback inverted in enables them to effectively go back when they lose the ball. And the number eight can drop deep where now they can look to form that solid 4 2 structure in defending. So, uh, Maresca's system is like a Guardiola system, involves slow possession build up, the 3 to 5 system, and the box midfield system. And him, a manager who has worked with two players such as Lavia and Cole Palmer at the Manchester City Youth Academy. He be a very good manager for Chelsea uh, in the recent uh, future. And these two players understand his philosophy. These players have worked under a manager who does positional play and they know what this is good for them. Having fullbacks who understand this philosophy 
players who are able to play in these inverted roles such as Rhys James and Kukurela will be a very huge asset for his system to succeed. Also having elite dribbling wingers such as Mikalo Modric and Noni Madweke in the wide areas is more likely to give him a lot of threat especially towards those positions. If you've enjoyed this video do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.